NASA has been working on the technology behind nuclear-powered rockets for years. In fact, they have been supported by several organizations, such as SpaceX. Recently, they announced a new technology that uses nuclear power to help speed up and improve the costs of interplanetary travel. By using this technology, they may be able to decrease the time it takes to travel to other planets, as well as improve the safety of the journey. While there are many potential benefits to nuclear energy, one of the most important is its ability to provide a constant, powerful supply of electricity. It has the potential to dramatically reduce travel times to far planets, boost launch flexibility, and keep astronauts safe throughout spaceflight. In addition, it lowered the chance of hostile satellite assaults. What exactly is this space technology, and how does it function? Join us as we investigate how SpaceX's brilliant nuclear spacecraft has taken the whole space industry by surprise. As NASA continues its Apollo-like Artemis project to build a rudimentary lunar colony with a vision toward future human landings on Mars, a rare combination of technology finance and political determination is on the verge of making space or nuclear reactors a frequent reality. A 10-kilowatt nuclear power station will be deployed on the moon's surface. The project is now the top priority of the agency's Space Technology Mission Directorate. Additionally, in July 2021, Congress appropriated $110 million for NASA to advance the development of a new nuclear rocket capable of transporting people and cargo to distant planets. The apparent explanation for this increased feeling of urgency is the space agency's stated goal of establishing a lunar outpost by the end of the decade, which is difficult if not impossible. Unimaginable without nuclear power, much alone landing a fleet on Mars, the creation of a nuclear reactive usage in spaceflight requires no big technological improvements. In reality, the United States has only done this once before, in 1965, when the Air Force developed and launched a functional prototype. Instead, the challenge is in navigating the dense web of laws that govern everything nuclear, ensuring that any strategy chosen for using nuclear power outside of Earth does not unduly constrain NASA. Simply the moon's surface or some other remote outer space location ideally, the power of the atom may be employed for robotic solar system exploration as well as primitive moon and Mars missions. To understand thrust, which is at the heart of rocket propulsion, consider releasing the nozzle of an air-filled balloon. As the air exits the hole, the balloon is propelled in the opposite direction. Thrust is the force pushing the balloon. Most rocket engines burn a mixture of fuel, such as liquid hydrogen, and an oxidizer, like liquid oxygen. Juice thrust works by forcing gas out of the engine's nozzle, causing the rocket to move in the opposite direction. However, there are more options outside chemical rocket engines. Nuclear thermal propulsion systems that are twice as strong as chemical rockets. Although a chemical rocket will be used to launch spacecraft from the Earth's surface in the near future, NTP systems that are nuclear efficient and provide the heat necessary to convert liquid fuel into gas and generate thrust have been the topic of NASA's study since the 1950s. Yes, these technologies offer significant benefits for spaceflight. Experts believe that by lowering the time it takes a rocket to reach its destination, the thrust generated by NTP systems may be doubled while using the same amount of fuel, making them twice as efficient as chemical rocket engines. The time needed to travel to Mars would be reduced by up to 25% or around two months and also reduce risks to astronauts, such as cosmic radiation and microgravity. NTP engines would also boost the adaptability of Mars missions. The sole opportunity for a rudimentary chemical rocket mission to launch is when the Earth's and Mars orbits are perfectly aligned, which only happens once every 26 months. An NTP system's efficiency implies that it would use substantially less fuel than a chemical rocket to reach Mars and a volume of uranium just a little larger than a marble. The engine's power would allow excursions to occur even when Earth and Mars were not in their optimal places, which is good news if you can't wait two years for replenishment or rescue. Nuclear propulsion would increase the number of crewed travel possibilities, as well as the number of trips needed to bring the fuel for such a journey into Earth's orbit.
The International Space Station weighs around 420 metric tons and was methodically built over more than 30 launches over a decade. It would be too expensive to lift more than twice as much weight from Earth for a chemical propulsion system necessary for a round journey to Mars. Remember the Orbit Launch System SLS, NASA's most powerful rocket ever constructed, which has yet to launch. It is only designed to lift 95 metric tons into space, but at a cost of $2 billion per launch, the single launch tonnage limit will rise to more than 100 metric tons, and the cost per launch should fall if or when the SLS is replaced by more capable and affordable rockets, such as SpaceX's in-development and all-reusable Starship. The 120-meter-tall spacecraft has the potential to drastically revolutionize how space scientists conduct their research. Aside from allowing human exploration, constructing outposts on Mars, and developing a multi-planetary species. If SpaceX's forecasts of cargo launch costs as low as $10 per kilogram are confirmed, they may be able to transport larger and heavier cargoes considerably more frequently and inexpensively. On Mars, rovers may be sent in groups rather than individually, while fleets of satellites in lower orbits may become more common in space. Telescopes, astronomy, planetary science, and Earth observation might all make significant advances. SpaceX's workhorse rocket is the Falcon 9, which is 70 meters tall. The aircraft sector has already been changed. SpaceX invented reusability with that rocket by using retro rockets and steerable fins to direct the first stage to a landing once it re-enters the atmosphere. The corporation is on track to launch more than 509 Falcon Heavy rockets this year, which works out to nearly one launch per week on average. Two of the criteria that allow SpaceX to charge a substantially lower price for a Falcon 9 launch than its competitors are dependable reuse and rapid launch frequency. Elon Musk, on the other hand, was not satisfied. Unmask drop plans for a rocket while having Mars in 2016 at an International Astronautical Congress in Mexico, the rocket would eventually be dubbed as BFR or Big Falcon Rocket. The concept evolved into a spaceship, but the emphasis on affordability and reusability continued, rendering launches as mundane as FedEx cargo flights. The rocket's body is composed of stainless steel, which is more costly and easier to manufacture than the aluminum alloys used in most rockets. But heavier methane is used in its stead of kerosene-based rocket fuels. It's less expensive and can also be produced on Mars by mixing carbon dioxide and water, which gives it an additional advantage. After a six-minute trip, the booster is intended to return to the launch pads, to be refueled and prepared for a subsequent launch. Starship can be reused as well. Each vehicle should be able to launch three times each day, and a tanker variant of the vehicle could refuel a laden Starship once it was in orbit, allowing it to carry a lot of payload to the Moon or Mars. On an interplanetary scale, nuclear thermal propulsion would essentially take the form of a ferry or transfer stench, a smaller nuclear-powered rocket docking with other transport components in orbit before launching its own payload separately while a combustion chamber where a rocket's fuel and oxidizer mix and ignite forcing hot exhaust from the rocket nozzle is replaced with a nuclear reactor that heats a cryogenic propellant blasting it through the nozzle. This configuration works similarly to a chemical propulsion system. From the outside, the process nearly perfectly resembles a rocket engine burning with flames. The main issue with nuclear thermal propulsion is that it employs a high-performance reactor with temperatures that may reach 2,500 degrees Celsius, which is alarming for astronauts and material engineers. Furthermore, the reactor would require massive amounts of cryogenic fuel, which would most likely come from on-orbit storage tanks, which provide their own set of engineering challenges. However, the method's extreme attention has an advantage. The propulsion system just has to be operational for a few hours. You do all of your tasks quickly since the spaceship is fast enough. Nuclear thermal propulsion is the clear favorite among Mars mission planners in part because of its relative simplicity. This method was deemed the most likely to result in a crewed expedition to the Red Planet in 2039 by the NASA-sponsored National Academy's assessment 
and it received a $110 million support from congressional appropriators in July 2021. Spacecraft might also be used to carry people to Mars in the middle of the 21st century. Seeing Mars in the stars might be as commonplace as visiting the International Space Station is right now, I might even be as easy as going to see how our neighbors in the future. Let us know what you think of nuclear-powered spacecraft in the comment section below. If you liked this video, hit the like button and send us your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.